Uh, so if you can get some space, like just maybe tuck in your chairs so that you've got space to do what I want us to do. Okay, it's very simple. I'll just give you an example of the first set that we're going to do. Okay. Are we still alive? <laughs> okay. So, guys, did you know that the number one reason why people don't exercise is because it's expensive? I did my research a few weeks ago, and it's $40 in Warren Park. It's 85 in Milton Park and $100 in Borrowdale. That was then, so I don't know how much it is now. And then it also doesn't include the joining fee, and you know how it is in Zim right now? Like, it's difficult to get almost everything. So you have to choose, do you want to join the gym, or do you want to go for a bri? <laughs> what do you prefer? Next one, please. So um, I've been on this journey for the past four years. I started working out in 2014 and after doing a research back then I think Five Avenue gym was $50 and um, unfortunately for me I couldn't afford it so I'd say to myself you know what either I'm going to be unhealthy for the rest of my life or I'm going to get creative and do something about it so I decided okay fine I'll just work out from home um, the main reason that got me to actually work out was I was overweight, like seriously overweight. I have a seven-year-old daughter, and then when I gave birth to her, just two days before going into labor, I was 85 kgs. And then fast forward to 2014, I hopped into the scale, checked my weight, I was 85 kgs, and I wasn't pregnant. So... <laughs> I was like, okay, fine, let's do something about it. And what did we do about it? Okay, you can see that's 2015, that's 2016, and then it's 2017. Then this is 2018. <laughs> okay, the common misconception is that you need money to build the body of your dreams. And ladies, you don't even need any of those fancy things. You know, those squats that we did, they're good for your booty. Um, there are so many options that you can work with. Um, and because I'm one of those, I'm always out for a budget. Like I'm budget buying, budget beating. So I make sure that the options I choose are readily available. So there's power walking. We can all walk, right? Like, you just need 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but it has to be brisk walking, not just, you know, like, dragging your feet around walking. You have to be, like, intentional about your walk, like you're doing something. And then there's running. There's body weight training. That's my current favorite. And 20 minutes, 30 minutes, if you're strong enough, an hour, but normally it's 20 to 30 minutes because it's very intense. It's high, like... 
yeah, it ups your heart rate, which is what you really need. Then you can play sport. How many of us played sport in school? Okay. What? Sorry? I can't hear. Yeah, back then, not now, back then. Okay, I didn't see the people who raised their hands. Okay. Which sport did you play? Basketball. Okay, what was your position? Okay. Who else played sport? Yes, Tabo. Yes, you. <laughs> Which sport did you play? Oh, nice. Okay. What position? Okay, and what are some of the workouts that you used to do when you were playing rugby? You don't remember? Jeez, okay. And then um, you can search for health and fitness related articles on WordPress. Like, I'm a fitness blogger, so you can just search for me. <laughs> and I don't know about any other Zim fitness bloggers, so if you know any, please do let me know, because I've tried to look for them, and I can't seem to find them. I'm the only one. <laughs> Invest in home workout DVDs. You know where to get those. And look for workout partner, fitness events. I always have something cooked up. If you follow me on Twitter mostly, I've got a challenge every month. So this month is our rest month because I've got something really intense for December. So you need to watch out for that. And then you need to eat right. So the thing about eating right is people are on crazy diets. What are some of the ones that you've had, like heard people talking about? Keto diet. Ish. People have money, guys. Have you seen the things on that diet? <laughs> um, which other diet? Banting. Yes, yes. Oh, that one is a famous one. Sorry? Oh, Paleo. Yeah, I've got my friend in India. She's been doing that for a while now, him. So the thing about diets is there are a lot of them. And depending on what it is that you like... Just go with the flow. Like, at the end of the day, it's your pocket. So if you feel you can afford it, why not? But my motto, when people come up to me and ask, okay, fitness bay, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. What can I do where food is concerned? I always tell them that um, eat a balanced diet. That's the key. But no one believes me because it's so simple, yet so strange. Just eat a balanced diet and you'll be fine. So, how did I make money from blogging? Does anyone else make money from blogging here? Okay. What do, what do you blog about? Sorry, I can't hear. Okay, please tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Fancy. Well done to you. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got a friend of mine who's based in South Africa. He's sort of like my mentor of sorts. So he one day said to me, you know what? Everyone knows you as Mark Kupsi for blogging about like your life experiences. I do blog about fitness on there as well. But he's like, why don't you branch out and specifically write about fitness? It's like, ish, dude, like, what else is there to talk about? It's like, you have five posts, and then what happens after that? It's like, no, give it a try. So I did. And then one year later, there were um, Zim Blog Awards, and my blog was nominated, and I actually won something. I was like, yes, now I like this. Maybe I should actually be a fitness blogger after all. <laughs> and then... Um, at the beginning of this year, there were also awards for Ziwa. You're, you're aware of those, right? Like the Zimbabwe International Women's Awards. I was nominated, and I got another award. So <laughs> I got excited about that. I was like, OK, more reason to blog. So the real reason why I continued to do this was that I realized that I've got an opportunity to create something beautiful. 
because people keep coming up to me, they're like, Fitness Bay, do you know, I've been trying this challenge, I tried what you said, I tried what you tweeted, and it's really working out for me. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm amazed. I thought I was just communicating my day, like, Twitter, like, every second you're just talking about whatever it is you're going through. So I was glad that at least it's helping someone. And because I'm always very interactive on my platform, whether we follow each other, whether we don't follow each other, I'm that one person who always reach out to you and say, comment on whatever it is, or suggest something, or reply your question. So it turns out that through that, I've had people in the background who have, um, like, they'll have campaigns and things like that happening within their organizations. And then when they sit down and start talking, they'll be like, oh, but then there's Fitness Bay. Why don't we get in touch with her? So um, sometime last year, Golden Pilsen approached me. They were like, would like to work with you. I'm like, really? Like, how many people are in Arari? Who told you about me? They're like, no, we can't reveal that, but we can tell you that the person said that you've got a very warm ambience, whatever that means. And then we decided to start working together. So um, I think if you are going to make money through blogging, you need to be one of those people who's going to be very consistent and very out there in a genuine way, not like trying to pretend to be a nice person when you're not, or a helpful person when you're not. People can read through that. So just be at the right place at the right time, and the opportunities will come to you. So how can you make your WordPress block? Rock? Block? Rock. <laughs> Choose a user-friendly blogging platform. Of course, WordPress. Plan. For those of us who do have blogs, how often do you post? Just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. It can be any time. Oh, wow. Okay. I know Tino used to have a blog. How often do you post? Okay. All right. Yes? Twice? Monthly. What do you blog about? That requires just two blog posts. Poetry. Do you know how many people love poetry on Afro bloggers? Like there's a Wednesday thing that happens there. And you're only blogging twice a month? Hmm. Okay. Let's read this together. In other words, have a content calendar. Have some form of a routine which readers will get accustomed to. It can be writing twice or five times a week or whatever you decide to do, but just make sure you do it religiously. I started off my fitness blog with at most three posts a week, but I now post once every Wednesday. If you're on Twitter, you know that I make noise about my fitness. So I think if you also want people to know about your blog, you have to make noise about it. Like at every given opportunity, just tell people, this is what I do, this is what I'm about. So make sure you plan that out. And if you're going to be remarkable, you're going to have to be consistent, guys. Twice a month doesn't cut it. Weekly, at least. Twice, three times, depending on your energy levels, but at least a post every week. And then proofread your work over and over again. You don't want to be that blogger who publishes work that has typos or grammatical errors. <clears throat> Even after publishing your post, it's important to read through it to make sure everything is in check. Ask a friend to read through it as well if you don't trust your own proofreading skills. Next, please. Read, reblog, share. This is something that we have like a major problem in Zim, like Zim blogger community. Most people want their work to be read. They enjoy the, oh, someone read my blog, someone shared. But then if you go to their blog, 
They don't read people's stuff. They don't share anyone's work. They don't even comment. Like, you can tell the traffic that, you know, Zimbos have been reading my blog, but no one's commenting. It has to be something that's reciprocal. If you want people to share your work, you're also going to have to take part. So, it's double-sided. Be 100% you. I cannot stress this enough. If you try and imitate someone else, you won't last in the blogging world. Keep your blog authentic, and you'll never run out of inspiration. I am one of those fitness people who is very honest and open about my journey. I drink alcohol. I eat cake. I go partying all night. But then <laughs> when the next day comes, I go back to my fitness journey. I eat right, because I'm only human after all. So it's the same with your creative process. Don't try and be what you've seen someone else doing. Just stick to being yourself. And then link your blog post to your social media sites. Mine is linked to Twitter, because that's where most of my readers come from. So you already know where your readers are, are stemming from, so just keep it there. Um, I never knew there was a term called unlearning. I was just so used to learning, 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 learning. So I then discovered, no, you actually have to stop certain habits if you're going to grow. When I started blogging on my lifestyle blog, if I look back now, I had 20 tags, guys, on a post, like hashtag Friday, hashtag WordPress, hashtag, hashtag. And you're like, why? But it's because you didn't know. So it's part of it. You need to grow, like constantly feed yourself with new things and then get rid of the old. Because if there's one thing I've learned about tags on WordPress, the more you have, the less chances people can see your work. So you actually need to have just maybe two or three and you're good. But because we are trying to get that traffic to our website, we are killing our posts with tags and tags and tags. Okay, um, I love my daughter. Her name's Kupakwashe or Kupsi, hence my Kupsi Fitness Bay. And if there's one thing that I really love about fitness is that when I go for the sports days and everything, everyone knows how ah, she is. Damn. She's going to win the race again. Because so, <laughs> everyone just looks at me and assumes, yeah, she's thick, can she run? But then they're pleasantly surprised <laughs> all the time. And I've stayed on the journey because I'm curious about what my body is capable of doing. I'll tell you that never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be able to run half a marathon. I started off running 500 meters and wanting to die. And then last year, I ran two half marathons. And that was the end of that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So knowing that your body can actually do amazing things is one of the reasons why I was stuck on this journey. Because I truly feel that everything is in the mind. You can't keep telling yourself you can't do this, you can't do that. But if you tell yourself that you're capable, you'll be just, just capable. <laughs> and then knowing that I'm making a difference in someone's life. Next, please. I've got a lot of screenshots, like so many of them, but I chose to just take two of them. This is one of the people I follow. Her name is Will Moyo. Says, thank you to Fitness Bay and Tina for sharing their stories and being such an inspiration. I remember a year ago reading Fitness Bay's blog and saying to myself, wow, she's just like me. I can do this too. Tina, your honesty surrounding fitness issues is so refreshing. Like I said, I'm always sharing my story and it really does help. And this was from my aunt. We hadn't spoken in close to 10 years and we didn't even notice it because, you know, like you never pay attention to people on Twitter's like images. You're just paying attention to their tweets. So I sent her a message and then she responded. And then she's like, Sha, I did the same thing, trying to see your, your pictures. And I was like, it's G. Sha, I'm so, so proud of you and all you're doing with fitness and getting people fit and being a true influencer. I remember having a conversation with someone and they were like, there, are there any influencers in Zimbabwe? And, you know, I was like, yes, fitness bay. Lo and behold, I actually know Fitness Bay Oacho. So that's the thing. Just keep doing you. And then 
I believe that whatever the mind can conceive, it can achieve. If I could lose 10 kgs instead of the five that I'd initially set out to lose in the space of a year without stepping into the gym, oh gosh, I can't breathe. Why didn't I put a coma? <laughs> Without stepping into the gym or pairing up with a professional trainer, what greater things can you do for yourself with all the tools that the internet had, the internet has at your fingertips? Or oh, there's this that that I hadn't told you. I wanted to lose the 10 kgs and the 5 kgs actually, and then I ended up losing 10, which was like wow, and I didn't even need any surgical anything. <laughs> When I started out the journey, the plan was to lose weight and be something close to a size zero. After reaching 69 kgs, I realized that what I needed was to be fit and healthy more than anything. I remember looking into the mirror when I got to 69 kgs. I could see my, what do we call these? My collarbones. I could see them sinking in. And my face, like, you know, I've got nice round cheeks. My face <laughs> started to sink in, and I was like, I can't recognize myself anymore. This isn't what I set up for. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. I want to be able to do things. But I can't do those things if I'm going to keep losing myself in the process. So I then said to myself, you know what? Actually, let's just be fit. Let's stop worrying about the size. Let's stop worrying about the dress. Let's just be happy. So um, losing weight doesn't have to cost you a single dime. You just need to have a reason why you want to exercise. That why will push you beyond your limits. So, any questions? Yes. Okay, my friends and family and followers call me an influencer, but I call myself a content creator, yes. And there is stigma around it. Like, if you read through Twitter, you're like, people say all sorts of things, negative things, of course, but then it just depends on the individual and how you want to take it. Anything else? Anyone on a diet I could try? <laughs> Is anyone on a diet of sort? No diet. How much water do you guys drink in a day? A lot. Like, a lot like how much? Can you quantify it? Yes. Okay. 1.5. Yes. Okay. I like that. <laughs> you are aware that there's, a, there's an application, right? I'll have to search for it and I'll, I can share it with you. The application, it helps you calculate your, the water, the amount of water your body needs. So it weighs, like, it uses your weight, your height, your body fat, and then it will let you know how much is equivalent. Because people say that you need eight glasses, but we're not all the same. We're different. Our bodies require different from us. So you can come to me later, and then I can share it with you. Because my body needs three liters, and I drink that religiously, like close my eyes and just drink. Because I like water, luckily for me. So you need to know how much you need. It helps with a lot of things. Okay, um, those are my social media um, links. Let's do just one more fitness number, and then I'll go. 